Hi everyone and welcome back to the Tasmanian Devil Channel. Yeah. This week we're going to be exploring some of the rugged coastline of the Tasman Peninsula. Uh, we've had some pretty wild weather um, and speaking of nippy, we're going to be having a look at the Tasmanian Devil's bite strength. Let's go check it out. Last week we mentioned that it was raining cats and dogs here and as we said there aren't any cats and dogs but we certainly have devils and other creatures. Well, it rained for uh, a couple of days, very heavily. There's an easterly weather coming in here, and that's not all that common. And the result is that that creek, as you can see here, is absolutely roaring. Now, are we going to have any flood damage? We've had this from time to time. At this particular point, which is quite close to our house, I can tell that the flood, or well, the creek hasn't been up terribly high, and the amount of damage is going to be minimal, if there is any. Let's go and have a look. As you can see, the, the stream or the creek is really raging here and it, that's what's spreading the water out around the other side over there and here's the problem. This is the blockage. Some trees have come down and, and blocked the stream and spread the, the effect of the flood. But as I said, it, look, it's not too bad. We'll just have to get in here and get some contractors with some chainsaws uh, when the water goes down and we'll cut away through this and then the creek will flow on as it has normally. Flood time, heavy rain, it's all part of life at the Anzu over the past 40 years. It's not all bad when you have a heavy rain like this. It actually uh, encourages the native rainforest species to, uh, to flourish. And uh, in the middle of the rain, in the middle of winter, here we are, a bright light. These are the flowers of what we call the native laurel. It's quite a common plant that's found in the Tasmanian temperate rainforests. And uh, it's actually found only in Tasmania. Just like the native laurel, which is found only in Tasmania, here's another species that's what we call endemic to this wonderful island. But this one's really special. We call it the purple cheeseberry. We planted this one here 40 years ago, and it's thriving. It's now two or three metres tall. But what's so special about it? Well, this is a plant that's found really only on the Tasman Peninsula area. Nowhere else in the world. One of the results of all the rain, of course, is that the kangaroos are a fair bit sodden and so too are the Cape Barren geese. But look, out there in the bush all around the place where this heavy rain's been falling, all of these animals have been able to put up with it and, and our kangaroos are among those as well. It doesn't worry them too much. It would worry us. We don't like getting soaked to the skin, but these animals obviously put up with all sorts of weather and they've been doing that forever. And here we are, folks. A very happy little devil, aren't you? all tucked away, nice and dry, all the bedding's tucked away in there and so this little Tasmanian devil is able to put up with the wet weather simply by hiding away. It's got a big smile, the Tasmanian devil smile showing all its teeth and there we are. Well, from wild weather to rugged coastlines, we're now going to show you one of the Tasman Peninsula's most famous landmarks. Now, the Tasman Peninsula is really quite well known for its walks and hikes. So there's loads of different hikes you can do all around this really rugged coastline, um, from quite easy walks right up until serious hiking journeys. There's also a lot of um, lovely surf here. So as you can see, really quite big waves. Um, so we do attract some some hardcore surfers here on the Tasman Peninsula as well. Now we're only about 10 minutes from the Tasmanian Devil Unzu, but we're going to show you something a little bit special. We're wandering down to the Remarkable Cave. Now if you look closely you can actually see that opening right at the end of the cave is almost shaped just like Tasmania. This has been carved out of the rock by the ocean over millions of years so there's actually two entrances to this particular cave and the the seawater floods in through and carves it out a little more each time just here you can see um, quite a dark charcoal rock now this is dolerite so it's a slow cooling igneous rock and it's got that sort of really sharp angled cleavage and as we move up you can see some intrusions there something um, with a, a, an iron intrusion there, a little bit further up, 
we've got our sandstone so this is a sedimentary layer so you can see all the different layers and this is how you can actually date this rock speaking of remarkable our Tassie Devil sure has an impressive bite strength let's go and see just how strong a Tasmanian Devil's bite truly is <laughs> Now the Tasmanian Devil can be cute and cuddly, but don't be fooled. <laughs> this little animal here does pack a punch, so to speak. The Tasmanian Devil has extraordinarily strong jaws. Now you'd think that little animal can't have a, a strong bite, but it really, really does. So as you would have learnt in earlier episodes, our Tasmanian Devil's not only eat meat, but they can actually bite through bone. So these guys will eat the entire carcass of an animal. So they eat the skin, the fur, the flesh, but also the bones. And they also extract that wonderful marrow from the bone. Now I thought we'd show you just how strong a devil's bite actually is. So this is a six ton shot press. Basically it tells us the pressure just here on our pressure gauge. We've got a cow's bone here. And um, basically I give this a couple of pumps and see how strong a pressure we need to break it. So there you go. So that's just over 400 PSI and we've cracked through the bone there. So there you go. So that's the strength of a devil's jaw. Now just here, we've got the devil's skull. So as you can see, a rather big jaw. Now you can also see there's a lot of room here for the muscles to attach. So the devil's skull is basically built as one big jaw. So they can open their jaw about 80 degrees. Built for biting. And that's all we've got time for this week. We hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Hit subscribe. And um, we're just going to leave you with a beautiful moody scene of the clouds rolling in over Hawks Hill in Eagle Hawk Neck. See you next time.